Greetings one and all to universes. In this show we will analyze the stats, weapons, and abilities of two fighters to see who would win in a battle to the death. Many people have predicted the outcome, so let's see who guessed right and who guessed wrong. And be sure to stay tuned after the episode so you can see the next fighters and make your predictions down in the comments below or in a video response. And who knows, your comment or video response could be featured in the very next episode. Now, let's meet our two fighters. Jack the robot soldier from Tekken, and Jasper, the court soldier from Homeworld. Which of these two military grunts would come out on top in a battle to the bitter end? This is Universes. Originally created for the task of eliminating a target, Jack robots stand tall, bulky, and ready to fight. Their first goal would be to destroy Kazuya after the Soviet Union learned about his plans for the first tournament. However, the Jack unit's main objective was soon pulled to the side as a war broke out. Jack 2 managed to save a young girl by the name of Jane who would later become one of his greatest developers. After Jack 2 was destroyed by a satellite weapon, Jane spent 10 years rebuilding him to be bigger and better than the last. And this went for all future Jack robots. Growing sick of her Jack being imitated and destroyed, Jane upgraded him again and again. Soon he was filled to the brim with all kinds of new and useful gadgets to test out in the King of Iron Fist tournament. Every new Jack is created with the info and knowledge that the previous versions have gained, thus trumping any need for experience to compete with other fighters. The first Jack unit is just about as basic as you can get. He's tall, bulky, and literally pounds his opponents into the ground. He doesn't use any specific fighting style and rather relies on brute force alone. Jack 2 was built to be a gigantic improvement over the first one, and he even got a new computer chip that allows him to learn from all of his mistakes. Gun Jack, or Jack 3 if you'd like to call it that, was given a pivot gun and a more durable exterior that could allow it to tank the satellite ray that destroyed Jack 2. Jack 4 units came with a handy little little self-destruct feature for them to use if their targets ever gave them too much trouble. The force of this explosion is enough to obliterate an entire mountain and sent Hihachi Mishima flying several miles away. Jack 5 didn't get any new special abilities or gadgets, but he was built with more state-of-the-art technology, making him way more powerful and durable than the previous versions. And finally, Jack 6 was given extendable arms for longer range, full-powered rocket flight instead of that weird flappy arm thing, and it was built to be 10 times stronger than Jack 5. We don't know what upgrades the upcoming Jack 7 will have, but it appears to already have glow-in-the-dark capabilities, so off to a good start. Luckily, the money spent to build these things didn't go to waste either, as the Jack units have gotten some pretty good feats under their belt. Well, for one, their rocket power flight allows them to fly into orbit in a single second. This is extremely similar to Jin Kazama's flight speed feat, so it's safe to assume that this was at least Mach 5000 speed. Even back during the Gun Jack days, this mechanical beast was able to tank a country-sized blast. And considering later versions of Jack are 10 times stronger than this, this would put him at at least continent level at his absolute best. This is proven even further when Jack 6 was able to completely obliterate a meteor that threatened the destruction of the planet at the cost of his arms. He may be powerful, but he's still a machine and is vulnerable to certain things like extreme heat from atmospheric re-entry that's able to melt him. But despite this, the Jack units keep getting better and better. While hunting down the Mishimas may be a bit tricky, hopefully a gym won't give him too much trouble. Let's take a look at Jasper. Jack! What have you done to yourself? Thousands of years ago, the Earth was under attack by Homeworld Gems from... Gem Homeworld. Is that seriously the most creative name they could have given it? Well, anyways, the plans of the Homeworld Gems were soon interrupted by Rose Quartz and her team called the Crystal Gems. In order to battle this rebellion, they'd need all kinds of new soldiers. They used locations all over the Earth called Kindergartens in order to grow more Quartz soldiers. Their time and resources were limited, however, which caused a few failures like Amethyst. But when everything was done right, a powerful war machine would emerge 
emerge, and one of the strongest and most recognized is Jasper. This big, bulky, powerful court soldier towers over her foes and strikes fear into their hearts. Jasper seeks only to fight the most powerful foes like the legendary Rose Quartz. Unfortunately for her, that is no longer possible, so she has to use her abilities to fight mere runs. Not like there's any real problem with that considering what she can do. As a court soldier, Jasper obviously has some military fighting skills, and she even has her own gym weapon like every other gym. A shiny little helmet may not seem like much, but the end is hard and pointy, making it perfect for headbutting. Not to mention it protects Jasper enough to tank a powerful punch from Garnet. Jasper can lunge at foes in a powerful fiery aura that can tear through just about anything, and she can even perform a spin dash move that looks like Sonic's. When it comes to defense, Jasper really doesn't have much besides her helmet. If she takes too much damage, her physical body will poof and leave nothing but a defenseless gemstone behind. But this isn't the end of Jasper as long as the gemstone isn't cracked. After poofing, a gem can reform into a completely new body in as little as just a few mere moments. Their new bodies are completely fresh and unharmed, kinda like a healing factor that only works if you die first. Not only that, but gems don't need to eat, drink, or sleep, meaning that their stamina is practically limitless. This means Jasper could go on in battle as long as she wants to. With this incredible stamina, Jasper is able to fight on par with Garnet, who reacted to point-blank lightning. Jasper can casually lift and toss around gigantic corrupted gem monsters, and her aura is hot enough to melt and dig through a ship that was able to resist blasts from Rose's laser light cannons and Opal's arrows. Now, when it comes to durability, the gem are quite odd. They can be poofed if their physical forms tear. Pearl was poofed after a stab from a sword, Jasper was poofed after being impaled by a metal rod, and even a gem monster was poofed by being squeezed to death. But if it's pure force alone, Jasper can tank quite a lot. She survived being inside her ship as it crashed to Earth and created an island-sized explosion. And while she may not be able to defeat Lapis, she can at least handle herself and tank attacks from this watery gem. The power of Lapis is enough to control all the water on Earth. That's 71% of the planet. This would mean Jasper is at least at continent level. A court soldier at their finest. But let's see which grunt will come out on top. Let's look at your predictions while I calculate the results. Said, I'm perfect the way I am. Then she had low standards. Hey, the only prediction we got didn't have audio, so. So, this is going to be interesting. I guess I'll just talk over the audio that isn't there, so that way the background music doesn't get copyrighted in case it's copyrighted, because I don't know if it's copyrighted, and I don't want this video to get a copyright claim. So I guess I'll use this time as an opportunity to tell those of you who don't know about the, my community. On Google+, Plus, if you go to the community section, you can search my username, and there's a community called Leopold the Brave, with all kinds of stuff related to universes and the rest of my channel as a whole. You can leave fight suggestions there. Um, fight suggestions on the community are more likely to be picked than they are if you just spam them in the comments section below. That's why Spongebob vs. Pinkie Pie is not happening. One, because it's a terrible idea. Two, because it wasn't in the community. <clears throat> Anyways, also on the community, I also post the link to polls so you can find them easier. Um, you can, uh, you can share your thoughts and discussions on episodes. You can also learn some fun facts about my channel and some stuff about the old shows that I used to do. And you'll get to you'll get ahead of time awareness of upcoming stuff like maybe I'll confirm a fight that's going to happen and then it won't happen until like 5 episodes later. So you could know about it like 10 episodes ahead of time. So yeah, there's just all this cool stuff you can do on my community, so be sure to go and join it. I won't put the link in the description though. You'll have to find it yourself because the link in the description is for the poll for the next episode, which in my opinion is a really good idea. I don't think anyone's thought of it. You're going to be hyped once you see it and I'll see you then. But now it seems like the predictions are just about over, so I shall vanish and tell you about the winner and who won and why. Ooga booga booga. And the results are in. The winner is... Jasper. Again, another close match. This one was a mystery even to me. Even you guys were lost for words as this was one of the closest prediction results counting comments, video responses, and the poll results.
Okay, so first of all, Jack is ahead in both speed and power. But, not only is his speed advantage not big enough to make a gigantic impact on the overall results, there's the fact that he could only reach the power needed to beat out Jasper by risking large parts of himself. Sure, he can obliterate an entire mountain with ease, but that requires a self-destruct. Sure, he can destroy a planet-threatening meteor, but it costs him both of his arms. Not to mention that this is the power needed to poof Jasper, not kill her entirely. She could easily reform and claim victory after Jack loses his arms or self-destructs. And considering Jack has obviously never fought a crystal gem before, he wouldn't know to shatter Jasper's gemstone after she poofs. Jasper would be able to come back with full strength and stamina to go another round, while Jack would be missing arms or whatever else he sacrificed to poof her in the first place. Sure, Jack has a chip in him that allows him to learn from his own mistakes, like not shattering Jasper's gemstone, but he'd have to make the mistake to begin with in order to learn from it. A mistake that he just can't simply afford to make against an opponent like Jasper. And considering Jack relies on brute force while Jasper has military-like fighting skills, that mistake would be made pretty easily. There's a few other aspects as to why Jasper won as well. For one, her helmet is what gives her the best durability, so she could easily get Jack to break his own arms by punching her helmet without even worrying about having to get poofed. She also survived an island-level explosion inside her ship, so Jack's mountain-busting self-destruct wouldn't be enough to do her in if he tried using that to bypass her helmet. One more thing. Jasper's fiery aura is hot enough to melt through her own ship, which was unharmed after experiencing atmospheric re-entry. Jack, though, has completely melted from atmospheric re-entry. Jasper charging or spin dashing at Jack would be more than enough to melt through his robotic body. Sorry, Jack, but this salute is for the superior soldier. The winner is Jasper. Look, your base is taken. Your armies are ruined. You have failed. Get ready for the next battle.